Hello and welcome to Chanakya. We deliver news without noise, facts without facade. Our guest today is a very eminent person from the Australian Indian community, Mr. Vishwanathan Narasimhan, a long-standing member of Australia India Business Council (AIBC). He is also the national chair of the Make in India chapter for AIBC and an advisory board member of AIBE, which is the commercial arm of AIBC. to promote and facilitate business to business engagements between australia and india interesting addition is uh, he's have uh, he has a journalistic experience of uh, over 25 years i take immense pleasure in welcoming mr vishwanathan hello sir how are you doing today yes good evening uh, mrs mala subramanian very nice to talk to you and to chanakya view uh, viewers thank you sir um there has been a lot of interesting developments uh, happening around the australian indian community with uh, let us start with the recent development of uh, increasing the permanent residentship uh, count from 35000 to 195000 that's a significant uh, increase can you give us some uh, details about uh, uh, you know the reasonings and the strategies behind this absolutely Uh, the Australia India Business Council has been always um, working closely with the federal government, uh, irrespective of the political nature of the government, whether it was a Labour government or a Liberal government, and I've been impressing on them that the um, migration policy has to be in alignment with, uh, you know, the business policies of Australia. So the reason being that um, if there is a mismatch, then the um pro- growth prospects of the business um will be affected so in from that angle this is a very welcome step in fact um, uh, mr jim borges our national chair has welcomed this step as uh, saying it's a positive step in the right direction um the immigration laws which which have been there for many years I've been having um, a change in a, a change for the better always, irrespective of the governments uh, which have been in operation. What in in, in especially in in the view of the recent developments of the economic and trade agreement, which have happened between Australia and India, and the there is a huge potential of growth in trade. So the. one of the key aspects of the economic and cooperation agreement is the education uh, there are many educational institutions in australia where indian students can study um, there are about nearly 11000 core uh, sorry there are 22000 courses and 1100 institutions where indian students can choose and study the yes. advantage of the increased numbers is some of those students who come here will be able to stay longer for example if they are belonging to the information technology or any of the engineering disciplines um they can or any specialized fields so they can even after they complete the study they can st- study longer and they can also work so that is the kind of uh, progress which they have made in in the immigration policy and this is a very welcome step uh to to sort of um meet the demand the skill uh, and also to address the skill shortages in australia due to the covid lockdown probably well right? the covid covid lockdown uh, one interesting thing thing about the covid covid lockdown is uh, it brought a new culture throughout the world called the working from home and there have been arguments that uh, even uh, working from home has increased actually the productivity but having said that i mean i also been working and from home but definitely i would like to see my teammates and uh, you know, once in a while or something that we've been longing to and i mean for the end of the covid period so um the as far as the business is concerned uh, it is not totally affected but although it was some of the sectors like the manufacturing yes it was affected but in terms of uh, agriculture on the contrary it is increased um the 3 to 4% agri- growth has been there in agriculture sector 
So, um, as we come on coming out of the COVID-19 period, uh, people are very enthusiastic to participate more significantly in huge Turning numbers. back to work. Okay. Turning back to work. And then um, that, that is why it is also providing a great opportunity between Australia and India in terms of the trade visits. For example, we had uh, two or three tra trade delegations in just two months where the visit of uh, the sugar industry delegation um, about two months back, uh, we had a visit of the ceramic tile manufacturers uh, from uh, India, uh, promo I mean, facilitated by Trade Promotion Council of India. And um, along with um, the Commerce Minister, we also had an, a number of delegates who came, including the Textile Promotion Council of India, Service um, Exports Promotion Council of India, Federation of Indian Chambers of Commerce of and Industry, PIKI. And recently, we also had Australia India Business Council held a Australia, International, Australia India International Business Meet, where we had an uh, eminent person from India, Mr. Deepak Bogla from Invest India. He came and um, along with his uh, deputy, Sai Sudha Chandrasekhar from Chennai, um, assistant director. And they, they all came and then talked about the opportunities for Australian businesses in India. So Thanks. if you see this kind of interaction, and similarly, as we speak right now, uh, the Australian trade, um, Australia India youth, youth dialogue is happening in Delhi. And there is also a launch of the Australia India Business Enterprise Limited, which is happening on the 10th. And um, there are people from Australia. Um, and then also from the trade minister is leading a delegation called Australia India Business Exchange, and they'll be visiting many other cities in India. So what I'm trying to say is post COVID, it is a dramatic activity happening. And we also have eminent um, uh, Indian ministers who came to Australia in the last two months, like Mr. R.K. Singh, uh, to sort of talk about the energy cooperation between Australia and India, because as you see, clean energy, hydrogen is the focus for both Australia and India. So uh, we're talking about partnerships in that area. Higher education, Mr. Dharmesh, Dharmendra Pradhan was here and last week. So like that, and the ministers also, I mean, Piyush Goelji was here a couple of months back. And, so and there the, has not the been any... Minister, Australian Defence Minister and uh, the Prime Minister, Deputy Prime Minister, Mr. Richard Malls, was also in India. Mm -hmm. so there's a huge opportunity in defence. So no, no significant in, change in the Australia-India business ties post uh, the Albanese government. That's what I meant for it. No, it has been growing. And it, it, been it, growing. it was growing even uh, the Scott Morrison. In fact, um, yeah. the comprehensive strategic partnership was signed between Prime Minister Modi and Prime Minister Morrison, Scott Morrison in 2020. And since then, there have been nine agreements that was signed in that. And since then, there has been following up. And the full-pledged trade agreement is called the Comprehensive Economic um, Agreement. It's called the CECA. That one, they're uh, uh, aiming to achieve in the next couple of months. And as a prelude to that, this economic, um, I mean, they, they said, okay, let's start the ball rolling by having a shorter version of that um, by relaxing the tariff issue. Like, you know, there has been a lot of issues between Australia and India in terms of the um, the, the goods and services, like, um, for example, the agricultural goods, um, whether it is, um, you know, uh, products, uh, sorry, agricultural products produced from Australia, like barley and uh, some of the, you know, other produce. Similarly, um, there have been products from India as well. So to facilitate this, both the countries have agreed on a tariff mechanism to reduce the tariff. Australia has reduced significantly tariff. In fact, they brought zero tariff on many, many items. And as you know, that Australian wines is going to be very popular in India. It's a huge scope of participation in the Australian wine industry. Um, there are very interesting 
very very interesting um, prospects in agriculture and not only the products as such for example the australian strawberry will be coming to india and then indian um, pomegranates are already in australia and but we were, we are campaigning for more of the indian produce like the alfonso mangoes and um, you know other kinds of fruits from india similarly the fruits from australia like avocados australian avocados are to be exported so we we, we are facilitating all these uh, issues biosecurity has been the biggest challenge and we are working with the government on that mm -hmm. and and how was the acceptance from the australian community uh, for indian students and workers from india uh, touching on the aspect of um, you know uh, race i mean uh, racism and uh, you know issues related to that okay the word racism in australia is a is in the past it should be buried once for all because um, it's not a situation anymore um we witnessed in the australia definitely there were racist elements in the past but to say that australia is a racist country is wrong in fact in 2009 i witnessed the students uh, agitation at that time uh, the indian students were subjected to certain uh, treatment i mean they went through some difficulty in all those things but to also to say to treat every incident as a racist incident that was also wrong so i was in the students committee um, set up by the consulate general of india in sydney we did analyze the students issue in that time we found that even the normal law and order situations were misinterpreted by many of the indian media as a racist so the, it it gave a portrayal of australia as a racist country unfortunately and and uh, we we uh, we we have sort of i even talked to some of the indian media to remove that impression mm -hmm. and i can uh, having uh, living in australia for more than 30 years i can definitely say that australia is not a racist country i am an indian with the indian passport living here for more than 30 years and i cannot live here peacefully if australia is a racist country perfect because the the reports are not only international i got i happened to read some reports from amnesty international but the most important and interesting report that fascinated me was from reconciliation australia it's a news agency it's a research uh, organization within australia which had come out with the number of 52% of indigenous australians being targeted in the year 2020 but hopefully uh, probably it's again due to the way picture is being seen that's what i'm learning from you and i hope uh, the the main question of many of our viewers are also answered by your uh, uh, view that that's not the case uh, and and in fact when it comes to the question of indigenous community in the last so many years i'm seeing in last couple of years the aboriginal elders are respected in every event we start our event in fact even our own functions we keep three flags australia flag indian flag and the indigenous flag mm -hmm. so if we respect the indigenous cult culture and then all the multicultural communities uh, do respect the indigenous uh, people here as a matter of fact um, it's a, in only last week australia india business council launched a chapter uh, for indigenous business it is the first time in the history of australia that we are promoting the business with the indigenous community with india mm -hmm. that's a unique achievement so um I, i must say that definitely they are recognized for better in fact the present antony's antony albanese government is recognizing them much more in the parliament as well there are a lot of acts which are being passed to in support of them and i am very proud to say that the integration of the the indigenous community is also happening and with the rest of the other communities so i think what whatever we are talking is all issues of the past there's nothing like that exist anymore that's great my last question to you sir uh, how is uh, you know people how are investors looked at in australia i'm calling this question uh, to based on uh, the experience mr uh, gautam adani had in australia regarding the coal export uh, if you can share some uh, thoughts into it it will be helpful it's a very good question actually uh, it's very um, 
uh, I would say the, the the good news or the positive news is Adani is contributing now to not only to Australia, but also they have started exporting the coal from Australia to other countries. Having witnessed the issues with Adani faced in, in Australia uh, about a couple of years back, in, uh, maybe about four, four or, or five or six years back, I know the story from the beginning. And what we have, I've been also, as a journalist, I've been also analyzing the issues and seeing all perspectives. What we came to know was there were 30 or 40 Western groups planted in Australia by countries outside Australia, and as well as with partners in India, to lobby against Australia, uh, the Donis. And almost it became such an issue, election issue. In one of those elections in Australia, Adani was an issue. It is since then, the community has moved on. This is because Adani was, the approach of Adani was very uh, observing resilience and proving the point that they can contribute not only to Australia, but also to the rest of the world. What they have been working tirelessly is to ensure that they get all the approvals, like the, all the environmental approvals and all the um, legal approvals from the various communities who are around that mine area. And to meet all the statutory requirements and, and plan their project very in a cool and composed manner. And they are able to deliver, deliver today in exporting the coal. So which shows the patience is the key to some of these business things. Having said that, we do not want Adani to become a, an example to the other uh, businesses. Now Adani is a success story. We have to cash on that aspect. We have to cash on the other aspect that India economic relations is growing. As we speak, between the two, two trade ministers, Piyush Goyal and the new minister, of, um, irrespective of the government, whether it was Dan Han in the previous government or um, Donald Farrell from this government, the relation is so good. Now they're talking about increasing the trade from $27 billion at the moment to achieve $50 billion in the next couple of years. In fact, some of the sectors are so promising, like cybersecurity, for example. India is prom India's spending is huge. The defense sector alone, in fact, we also have recently launched a defense and security chapter, Australia and the Business Council. We see the potential is so huge that the Australian government spending is 200 billion in the next 10 years. Indian spending is 250 billion in the next 10 years. So immediately there is an opportunity for Australian companies to participate in the Indian defense market through the FDI program, which is promoting 74% of the foreign direct investment. So it is open to the investors from Australia. Similarly, Indian companies can also enter into the Australian market in terms of the cyber security and things like that. And there is a lot of synergy happening um, between the companies. So it's, it's only sky is the limit. And that is why I'm saying this immigration policy is a boon. The relaxation of the immigration and policy is uh, the government is now listening to the voices of the business people and to say that people are now looking into India as a source. And India is not next China, but India is, you know, definitely has got a vision, not only for India, but also the Prime Minister's Make India and Atmanirva pro programs. It is proved. It is not only good for India, but for the rest of the world. And we have listened to the Australian Prime Ministers, irrespective of the political spectrum, to this extent, is that India is a natural partner of Australian economy. And we have also seen the same similar feelings reciprocated by Prime Minister Modi since 2014 when he came to Australia. And it is, it's growing and growing and growing. So there is an opportunity for the Indian youth to participate in the Australian economy by coming as students or coming as skilled migrants or coming as investors. We want more Indian businesses to come to Australia. I'll tell you, sometimes I feel sad 
that very, very big, large Indian companies, I've been talking to them also, are missing out a lot of opportunities in Australia. For example, there is something like a hundred billion dollars worth of infrastructure projects happening. Where are the Indian companies? And, uh, you know, unless they come here physically and be there like Adani, and there are metro projects happening, there are mining projects happening, there's a lot of infrastructure projects happening in every state. In New South Wales alone, because we have the new airport coming, um, Western Sydney Airport, there is a huge opportunity for Indian companies. Logistics, professional services, there is, people can come and, you know, partner here with, you know, establish their facilities here and take away some of the businesses back to India. There is also, you know, it's a win-win situation. So it's not one-sided. So, so that's why I'm trying to say it is, it is good for Australia, good for India, this partnership. That is why this is our prime goal of Australia Inter Business Council. And last 35 years, we have been striving for this and we are seeing the results. Okay. Thank you so much for taking time and talking to Shana Kiesar. Best wishes to ABC and uh, I hope the ties between Australia and India grow stronger, benefiting both the nations and people of both the nations. Yeah, the last message I want to give is to the Indian students uh, to consider Australia as a favorable destination without any fear and with the hope that they will be able to contribute both to Australia as well as India. Sure. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you.